I'd be surprised if this is a mare that we're not talking about as potential graded level as the season progresses. Hello everyone, delighted to be back on The Jump Show. The first week went off very well indeed with Jake Price and Dan overall. Far too well actually, I thought, because I thought to myself, is there really any point in me coming back? But here I am, I have returned. Hopefully uh, you will enjoy my presence this week. We had 10 handicappers to follow on the first episode of The Jump Show this season. And this week, another 10 to look forward to from both Jake and Dan as well. And special guests for this week let's talk racing so a huge amount to enjoy in this upcoming video and hopefully some winners in there as well these aren't horses to back blind remember but they are ones to keep an eye on throughout the course of the forthcoming season so without further ado let's get the first thoughts and the first horse from dan overall the next handicapper on my list is dare to shout trade by Anne hamilton obviously a yard known for their Tremendous strike rate in recent years, although it was a bit down on last season. 39% two years ago, down to just 14% last term. Only five was in total, and two of those came from the aforementioned Dare to Shout. Only won his point in November and quickly bought for £50,000 by Ian Hamilton, who actually said after buying him, he thought he was worth probably about 100. So, in his opinion, they got a good buy, and to be fair, the first few runs he had did make him look fairly astute in that regard. His rules debut came in January, but didn't really jump great, but still ran a race full of promise behind 132 rated Colonel Harry. Improved from that to win easily. Next time might buy eight lengths. Who was getting seven pounds from the 120 rated Rich Hill and the 111 rated Kingston Bridge was a further nine lengths behind that day. So reasonable form there. And again, one under a penalty next time out in what was a bit of a weaker race. After that, they had a go in a handicap off 126, went off the 3-1 to one favourite for it, as a lot of these Anne Hamilton horses have tended to do in recent years. The market hasn't tended to miss them, but it was only 13 days after his last run, and obviously he had been fairly busy since being acquired after winning that point, and maybe he was just over the top by that stage. He didn't really run all that great of a race, but dropped two pounds for that to a mark 124. I think if you look back on his earlier runs in Novice Company, if you put a line through that handicap run, I think you're still looking at a horse with plenty of potential. Seems to handle all types of ground, is one on good to heavy. So, I mean, that that's obviously an encouraging sign. He definitely will make a chaser, no doubt about that, given his point to point background as well, and should get further than two miles in time, too. So, should have plenty of options. I say a mark 124, I imagine, will prove to be lenient. And I think if you look in those northern types of races, novice handicap chases and handicap hurdles up there, if they stick to hurdles for now, he should find plenty of winning opportunities over the months ahead. Cool. Yeah, Anne Hamilton, you can't go wrong. She always outperforms with her small batch of horses. But let's move on straight to my next horse. First up in this video, I'm going for a horse called Zamix. Now, he's rated 116 and trained by John Joe O'Neill. And he's a horse who's definitely taken some time to mature and he's still nowhere near that, being only a five-year-old now. But he started his career as a four-year-old where he was very, very immature on debut. Um, he got caught behind up at Hereford and ended up unseating his rider at the second last. But after a little bit of a break, he came on leaps and bounds in a second start and up at Ludlow. He then stuck on for third behind Egbert, who's rated 116, and Impose Toi was in second, who's rated 121. And that's another horse who I could throw into this list. Following a 72-day break, however, at the end of the season, Sarmix ran up at Shepstow, and having set off quite prominently, he again showed his tendencies for being quite immature, and he looked a bit bored halfway around the back and just started losing his position for no real reason. Um, at the top of the home straight, he was quite far behind the leaders, it has to be said, but under a really nice ride from Harry Cobden, just to nurse him along, he really picked up at the last, made good progress all the way to that point, and then he had his the winner, set, uh, the, the second place set in his sights, and he just absolutely stormed home, ended up winning going away by two and a quarter lengths, and the horse he beat that day was the two to nine favourite called Lastro Boy, who's rated 136 for Evan Williams, and he was second in the Grade 1 Tolworth Novice Hurdle on his previous start, so that's a good scalp to get. He was obviously receiving a little bit of weight um, from the second place that day, but a mark of 116 definitely looks workable. He's since been sold for 70 grand to John Joe O'Neill, so that's why he's in um, new colours now. He's not going to be in the Walters Plant Hire colours anymore. Um, but I think he can definitely do some do some things over hurdles this season, or even go over fences. 
I think they probably need to get a bit more experience into him first, so that's why I'm thinking the handicap hurdle route might suit him better. I wouldn't be surprised to see some headgear go on him at some point because he looks to be the type of horse who's going to benefit from that. And um, as, he, as he progresses through the ranks and starts to learn his job a lot more, I think he can turn into a really nice horse. Lovely stuff from Jake there. Yeah, Zarmix, very much to keep an eye on uh, this season, particularly starting out first time for John Joe and Neil. Let's move on to our special guest this week. He is very well known in the racing world from the Let's Talk Racing channel. It is Joshua Stacey with his first horse to follow. Yeah, cheers, lads. Thank you very much for having me on. A horse I'm really looking forward to seeing this season is only a four-year-old trained by Fergal O'Brien called Phils de Roi. Um, had plenty of runs in France before moving to Fergal's and winning on debut at Huntington. His last start in France was actually at Ortoy, winning by 15 lengths. Since... <laughs> In and out, fell, he finished ninth in the Boodles, he was then beaten heavily at Ascot, and then he went back to France on his previous start, a, a French adventure for Fergal O'Brien, and finished fifth of 16 in a pretty hot race. I think these French horses, especially Fergal O'Brien, had an experience with a French import um, in a syndicate with Fergal. They take a year to get going. I think he's rated 119, and I think he could be a good bit better than that. So Phil de Roy, to be well handicapped for Fergal O'Brien. Yeah, a big thank you to Josh Dacey for joining us. And let's move on to the next horse. Red trip over to Ireland for my next handicapper to follow, which comes in the shape of the Henry de Bromhead trained Foxy Girl. Currently only rated 123, but I'd be amazed if she didn't prove to be way better than that mark as the season progresses. As they made her Irish debut and ran into a, a get race fit and more experienced mare in Liberty Dance, who would go on to win a listed race on her next start. And the third, actually, was several lengths behind, is now rated 123 as well. As she made no mistake on her next start on St. Stephen's Day, being a horse trained by Willie Mullins called In Excess, who again would go on to frank that form by winning very comfortably on his next start. And after that, it was a case of, I, I think, and a lot of people thought she would go into the mayor's handicap hurdle at the Dublin Racing Festival. She was the antipost favourite for it, and quite a short one as well. But for some reason, whatever it was, uh, she didn't end up running there. And instead, they went straight to the mayor's novice hurdle at Cheltenham, which was ambitious given she hadn't actually run since that, well, breaking her maiden tag on St. Stephen's Day. Uh, a very inexperienced compared to a lot of mares in that field. But she was actually the choice of Rachel Blackmore, and she went off the shortest price uh, of the five Henry de Bromhead runners for that race. And again, I think what cost her that day was her inexperience. She has been quite keen on her previous starts, and that showed again here. Uh, she pulled her way through the field early on after trying to be restrained, ended up in a more prominent position, looked a bit raw when asked to pick up as well, but still was a decent run. She shaped really encouragingly, only to beaten 12 lengths at the end. And again, given all the issues I, I said previously, I think that was a run full of promise. Haven't seen her since, but only at rate 123 after that. Obviously, the fact that she was the choice of Rachel, the fact she went off a relatively short price for the Mayor's Novice Hurdle, which suggests that they think she's way more capable than that mark would suggest. I'd be surprised if this is a mare that we're not talking about as potential graded level as the season progresses. So I'd be very hopeful that, especially in the early parts of the season, she can make a mark 123 look very, very lenient indeed. Thanks very much, Dan, who is, of course, a bit of a foxy man himself. And he's gone with Foxy Girl for one of his handicappers to follow. I know that, Jake, you're quite jealous of that one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if Dan hadn't got there first, then Foxy Girl would have been on my list. So, yeah, hopefully she has a good season. I absolutely love her. Good stuff. Uh, that is Dan's horse to follow. Not Jake's, of course, though he would have liked that in his little list. Uh, but the next one from Jake is forthcoming. Next up on my list is a horse that I really like, and that's Spillane's Tower. Now, he's a five-year-old rated 130 over in Ireland, and he's trained by Jimmy Mangan. But he looks ridiculously well handicapped across the Irish Sea, and I, I, I really hope that they go for a handicap hurdle with him rather than go chasing. Um, last October, on his second start over hurdles, Spillane's Tower was only beaten ahead by Imagine, the Gordon Elliott horse who's now rated 136, so that was a brilliant effort considering his subsequent exploit. And then following a break of 103 days due to some niggly problems, he then went to Nace in February and ran out a very impressive winner of a maiden hurdle, where he stepped up in trip to two mile free furlong and beat Franciscan Rock by 2.75 lengths. So it was a good performance, beat him well, and that horse again has gone on to boost the form no end, winning his maiden on his next start, and then finishing third in the Grade 1 um, Irish Mirror Novice Hurdle at the Punchestown Festival. So that's a nice piece of form, um, and such was the strength of it. Spillane's Tower was sent off an 11-4 to chance for the Grade B Easter Handicap Hurdle up at Cork. Um, he was rated 126 that day. He went down to the first, jumped it beautifully, 
and then just so unluckily clipped heels with the horse in front afterwards, giving Simon Torrens absolutely no chance and unseating, which was a real blow for connections. After that, though, they decided to, I think, protect his handicap mark because they went to the, um, a novice hurdle at the Punchestown Festival rather than going back for a handicap hurdle, which they could have done. Um, and instead, they dropped him back in trip to two miles, ran in a novice hurdle. He was sent off about 16 to 1. But he ran on really strongly for second behind Monbeg Park, who's rated 137. Um, and he also had some good horses behind him that day, such as Uncle Phil, who's done well over fences, Arctic Brazil, who's well fought of for the Henry de Bromhead yard, um, and Firm Footing, who's rated 130, was also down the field. So it looked a decent race. He ran really well in it. Um, and I think it's time for him to kick on this season. He's only been raised £4 for that run, a full mark of 130, as I mentioned at the top of this. Um, and I really think that a race such as the Grey Bree Brown Lad Handicap Hurdle run at Nace in November over two and a half miles could just be absolutely perfect for him. And considering his connections, I'm sure he'll be smashing the betting if it is his time to win. Next up is our next special guest, and that is Andrew Blair White, again from the Let's Talk Racing channel. So let's see which selection he has come up with. Hi guys, thanks for having both Josh and myself on for this Handicapper to Follow video. Uh, really loving your stuff and obviously we're all very much looking forward to getting back into the jump season proper. A uh, couple of handicappers I quite like, a horse called Parker Kings, but he won at Ross Common the other day. So he has gone up in the ratings for that. I still think he might have another win or two under the belt for himself but the main one i'm going to hammer in on is the barry connell trained my immortal currently rated 134 over hurdles now at the same time he is going to go chasing this year so he's perhaps not a horse to maybe stay on side earlier in the season but maybe one for those later races uh, throughout the calendar year he's going to go chasing he's going to be in beginners chases he may even turn in and run in some of those graded novice chases at the early part of the season but i see his future being in those big novice handicaps at the back end of the year quite notably there's a novice handicap at Navan two weeks before the Cheltenham Festival, there's also one at Nace a couple of days before the Cheltenham Festival which are races that I feel this horse will be targeted at, considering he wants three miles, he wants a trip and he also wants a bit of softer ground you look at his hurdling performances, they got better run on run, I think the application of cheek pieces last time out when only just touched off at punches down suited him down to the ground and it wouldn't surprise me at all if that head was left aside earlier on in his chasing campaign and maybe brought into fruition when he does tackle handicaps. I'd be personally disappointed if he wasn't a stone better over fences and may end up being a high 140s, even maybe an early 150s horse. This is the type of horse I think that could win a Thiestes chase down the line, maybe even a Paddy Parr, something along those lines. And therefore, my immortal for Barry Connell is definitely a horse to keep on side this year. Maybe not before Christmas, but definitely after Christmas, with a bit of give in the ground, those novice handicaps, I think he will win a fair bit of money. What a surprise. What a shock that is. Andrew Blair White tipping up a Barry Connell horse. I thought I'd never <laughs> see the day. In case you didn't realise, that is hefty sarcasm. But, of course, good luck to both Andrew Blair White and Barry Connell with that one. Time now for Dan's next horse to follow, a horse that I was lucky enough to see earlier this week, actually, at the yard of Neil King. Neil, very excited about this one. He thinks he could take very high rank in the novice hurdle scene. But who is he? Let's find out from Dan. My next handicapper to follow is a Neil King train, Look Away, who won the Atri Bumper back in 2022. And after that race, Neil King said he could be the best horse he's ever trained. That seems an awful long time ago now, because last season was just a bit of a nightmare for the yard in general. I mean, their lowest number of winners since 2007, lowest strike rate since 2009, so only 10 winners in total, and four of them came in the early summer months. So, like many of the prospects in the yard, Look Away was one of those adversely affected by whatever was going on in the yard last season. He did actually make a fairly promising hurdling debut over 2 mile 5, like he did shape with a degree of promise a bit too keen to swim, do himself justice but you thought he might kick on after that and he just didn't really progress a couple of decent runs but nothing to make you think this was the horse we saw win that entry bumper but interestingly as the summer started to roll around the yard started to turn a bit of a corner they went to a 70 percent strike rate since may and look always had a couple of confidence boosting runs during the month of May as well, bolted up and beat 120 rated horse called Goldlink over two miles before another very easy success uh, in novice company under a penalty. 
Only rated 122 now. Like, that surely underestimates his ability. I think those two confidence-boosting runs will do him a world of good. And he actually remains a novice over the hurdles for the entire season as well. So he's got a plethora of options this year. He really does. He could go chasing. He has won a point and beat 132 rated collector's item in that point-to-point. -point. But obviously, still as a novice over hurdles... The world is kind of his oyster, really. 122 does get him into plenty of decent handicaps as well. And you'd be really hopeful that that does underestimate the ability. And if the yard are very much back to what they can be, then hopefully he can prove that to be a very, very lenient mark. Two and a half miles, I'd say, would be his preferable trip at this stage. May get three miles in time, but hopefully whatever route they decide to go down, whether that be hurdles or fences, he can make a mark 122 look very lenient indeed. Yeah, so look away, Tom. As you said, you saw him earlier this week. What did Neil King have to say about him? Yeah, Neil's really excited about him. He's a, a, a gorgeous type, really strong. He's developed very nicely over the last few months. And we all know that Neil King was suffering from a, a pretty bad spell for most of last season, really. And look away was one of the sufferers of that. But he's gleaming now in his coat. He looks great. He started proper exercise. He's won a couple of novice hurdles now at Utoxeter. And he's certainly one who could take very high rank. I was hugely impressed with him, the way that he looked. We saw him working up the hill. He galloped beautifully and did it very easily, took everything in his stride. And I'd be very confident he's certainly going to be a horse who will be better than just the average novice hurdler. He's definitely better, certainly, than a racing that he's currently got of 122. So, yeah, I'd say plenty to look forward to. And I'd, I'd agree with Dan about that. Yeah, absolutely. But let's move straight on to my next selection, which actually features another special guest. Next up on my list is a horse called Guatapan Colonge. He is a seven-year-old trained by Charlie Longsden. And it's kind of hard to believe he still is a seven-year-old, to be honest, as he's already enjoyed a fantastic career over fences with four wins in nine runs. So clearly he's got a good strike rate. But I think there's more to come from him this season. Now, last season, he won well on his reappearance at Warwick in November where he won a three-mile, one-and-a-half furlong handicap chase at Warwick off a mark of 120 in pretty game fashion, to be honest, despite making a mistake at the last that day. And then after a 74-day break, he returned in much hotter waters for the Premier Classic handicap chase at Warwick again. Obviously, that's stepping up in trip to three-mile, five furlong. And I think his lack of experience is kind of what counted against him that day. He was one of the youngest horses in the field, and despite being sent off the 5-1 to favourite, he just jumped right throughout, could never really get to the front when finishing fourth, which wasn't a bad effort. Um, but he managed to put that run behind him very quickly as he then went to Yotoxa in a Class 2 handicap chase back over a traditional three miles. And he was seen to much better effect in beating Mr. Coffee, who was rated 143 by a length. So that was a good performance, and he was put up to a mark of 132 for it. And so Connections decided to go back to Utoxa for the four mile two furlong Midlands Grand National. And um, again, he ran a decent race in fourth place, sent off the 11 to 2 favourite, but he just couldn't really get involved. Like, he, I don't know if it's the trip or if it's just his age, but I think this season he's really going to develop further. He's been dropped two pounds since to a mark of 130, which is obviously going to help him. He's had another summer now to strengthen up even further. And I think off a mark of 130, he's still got big pots well within his reach. Um, a race that I actually think would really suit him is the three mile, one and a half furlong Betfair exchange handicap chase on Betfair chase day up at Haydock. And coincidentally, that race was actually won by his full sister, Fontaine Colonges, off a mark of 132 last season. So off a two pound lower mark, if he can do what his full sister did, then he would obviously have a fantastic chance. And races such as the Tommy Whittle would also be up his street. I'm sure Connections will be um, in the spring targ targeting these big nationals once again. Um, but one man who can tell you all about what his plans are going to be is Charlie Longston. And he sent in this fantastic video to tell you all about him. Yeah, like, really looking forward to seeing Guatapan Colange back this season. Um, I'm guessing the plan would be probably to aim for a lot of the big staying chases. I say working back probably from that Warwick Classic in early January. Um, if you go back from there, you might get three runs before that. There's a race, there's some decent valuable races at Haydock and Cheltenham in mid-December. Um, Haydock, Ascot's in mid-November and maybe I might start at Carlisle at second up near the end of October. So there's some just plenty of nice races and all big handicaps. And I really think that is one or two handicaps with one of them off his current mark of about 130. Um, a lot to look forward to him. He's a year older, a year stronger, and um, he could have some fun. 
Thanks so much to Charlie Longson there for giving up his time for the Jump Show this week. Really interesting to hear his thoughts. Now time to move on to Dan once again with his latest handicapper to follow. The next handicapper to follow on my list is a horse that's been held in very high regard for some time, and that's the Paul Nichols train, Matterhorn, who shot onto a lot of people's horses to follow this a couple of years ago when making his debut in France uh, in a listed race, which worked out very well, and he would have won that comfortably if not for a dreadful error at the last. Many then thought he might be a juvenile hurdler to watch a couple of seasons ago, but were described as really big and quite backwards when he joined the Paul Nichols yard, so they gave him plenty of time, so he only made his debut for the yard last season, which came at Sandown in heavy ground, where... Unfortunately, it was pulled up. As we know, that's what Sandown heavy ground can do to young horses. So he was looked after once it appeared he was beaten. Uh, and he was actually given a lot of time off after that as well. He was given four months break and wind surgery after that run, where he was then had his sights lowered slightly, went to Torton over two mile three on much better ground. And sh again, showed he's quite exuberant. He was quite free going, went from the front, but made all to win in very comfortable fashion. Jumped really well. The race wasn't great, but was an impressive display and he looked really good in doing so. I mean, so much so that Paul Nichols described him as maybe on that evidence, one of the best, if not the best, novice hurdler he's actually sent to the track. And bearing in mind, last season they sent the likes of Affidil and Rubo there, obviously both very decent novices last season in their own right. I see that's some statement from him, although I think Paul may have forgot he spent the likes of Alpha Roth. Uh, and uh, Safi Daru as well to taunt him back in the day. So maybe a bit premature to compare him to those, obviously, greats of the stable. But shows that they think a lot of him. Uh, they were actually then thinking about sending him to Aintree. But they had, uh, I think, a lower sight instead with him. He went to Huntington uh, for a two-mile novice hurdle, which, again, a bit of a dropping trip, which proved to be slightly on the sharp side. Was, again, quite free. Went from the front. Looked like he may have a good winning chance, but was eventually run down by a stronger stayer in Western Zephyr. Uh, a couple of decent mid to 120s horses in behind and several lengths behind uh, Matt Hall on that occasion. So it looked a, a reasonable race for the grade. I think that was the last we saw of him. But he's only got a mark 122. And he does actually remain a, a novice over hurdles until the 1st of December. So I think actually connections may be looking at the Persian War with him. Obviously not ideal for a handicapper to follow. But I think for a mark 122, they may look to go down the handicap route instead. It does look pretty lenient based on what they think he can be. He is going to have to learn to settle and relax, but I think he's unquestionably got more ability than that mark. Obviously, he may have options to go over fences, I think, in a year or so's time as well, which may bring out the best of him. It may also help him relax. But for now, I think I'm at 122. He's definitely got races in from that mark. I think two and a half miles-ish on good ground, if he can learn to settle, will be his ideal conditions. And I imagine, or I hope, he's got plenty of handicaps in him this season. Perfect. So that's it from Dan this week. Let's move on to my last selection of the video. The last horse on my list for today is Grandero Bello. Now he's rated 138 over in Ireland for the Eddie and Patrick Harty team. And I think that his mark of 138 looks quite exploitable in handicap chases this season. Now last October he made his debut in a beginner's chase up at Galway. And it was a really good race actually because the Devil's Coachman, who's now rated 147, was the winner. And in second place was Church Street Warrior, who's rated 148. So Grandero Bello did well in third, and he also had Volcano behind, who's rated 130, and probably is another one who qualifies for this list if he comes back sound this season. Unfortunately, he was badly hampered and had to un and then ended up unseating on his next start at Punchestown. But after a break of 60 days, he then returned in January, where he ran in a beginner's chase in a match race up at Fairy House, where he was against Bron of Willie Mullins. Now, I remember watching that race on Trials Day from one of the TV screens there, and... I just thought that Brom was going to absolutely hack up, to be honest. Um, but Grandero Bello ran an absolute blinder. He made Brom pull out all the stops and was only beaten a neck into second place, which was a brilliant effort because obviously we know Brom has gone on to finish third in two grade ones subsequently at the Cheltenham Festival in the Brown Advisory and again at the Aintree Festival. And he's now rated 154, so that form looks strong. Back in much calmer waters, however, at Goran a month later, Grandero Bello then got off the mark himself over fences, where he put in a brilliant performance to win by five and a half lengths over Max Charm. Now he's now rated 143, having won a Punchestown Festival handicap chase himself. So again, the form is just working out left, right and centre. He stepped up and tripped to three miles in the grade three chase at Limerick on his next start, where again he bumped into the Devil's Coachman, his old rival. And again, he ran well in second place. Um, whilst also having life in the park, who's rated 139 behind. At Punches Town, though, he was dropped back in trip to two mile five furlong, and although putting in a good effort in fourth, it just wasn't him. 
Um, I don't think they're very suited. He's had a long season. And yeah, but he, he ran okay. Behind him, he had Lalex with Tully Begg and Orfreis Art, who have gone on to do decent things this summer. But I think it was just marked the end of a long season. Coming back this year, however, I think the real question mark with him is how strongly he stays three miles. Because I think at Limerick, he did show that he can do it. It's just how strongly he can do it this season. And I think having had another summer to strengthen up, hopefully that will really help him out. So a race such as the Munster National back at Limerick next month could just be right up his street, to be honest. The bare three miles off a mark of 138, going from a prominent position. I think that he has all the makings of being a good handicap chaser this season. Excellent stuff. Thanks very much indeed to the guys from Let's Talk Racing, to Charlie Longston, and of course to both Jake and Dan, the stalwarts of the jump show, with all their thoughts and their handicapping fancies for the coming season. That's it for this week. Please do leave a like and make sure to subscribe and comment indeed with your best handicap horse in your opinion for the forthcoming season. Next week, do tune in once again because it's the big one. It's the 2023-2024 season preview.